you guys, Christina within the garden and today I am getting ready to go outside so I have my snow hat on and warm clothes and we're going to go do some kind of clean up so we're going to clean out all of the um, beds from the fall that had like foliage and stuff that is now died off with the frost. We're going in. to overwinter this pepper and the reason we're doing that is because it is a pepper that Joe decided to do an experiment with. Um, he wanted to take a pepper plant. So the bottom of this plant is a jalapeno. I left these on there for way too long just so that I could do this video. But this bottom half here is all jalapeno. This is jalapeno. And at these two knuckles, which I'll show you closer up here in a second, these two knuckle points, he created a living joint where he spliced in two other pepper plants. Now the one that would have grown off on this section didn't make it, um, but this one did, this one. So this bottom part is just a regular jalapeno. And then this top part is a Carolina Reaper and has a very different texture to the peppers where, you know, jalapenos are like thick skin and they don't feel hollow. Whereas these are, and they feel a little more hollow, if you will. And here's some green ones at the top. So. What you can do when you have a pepper plant, if you'd like, is that you could bring it inside, keep it dormant, and the next year when it goes out, it'll be this tall when it starts instead of really tiny like a seedling, and you're starting the plant's root growth all over again. What we're doing here is we're bypassing half of the growth that needs to happen in the spring and summer by giving it a jump start um, with the root system it already has. And as you can see, this base is very, it's a very established, thicker, significantly rounder in diameter um, plant than, you know, had we just bought it at the nursery and it's, you know, thinner than this, let's say right here. Um, so, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take all the peppers off. We're gonna put them on our baking sheet, um, baking sheet and we're going to dehydrate them because I don't have any plants for them quite yet. Um, then we'll put them in an oven at 200 degrees and we'll bake them for, bake them, dehydrate them for a couple hours. Um, then we're gonna trim back all of the extended limbs here. These will come back in the spring, um, but what we want it to do is stay dormant. And then we water it like once a week, once every two weeks, not that often. You want to, to feel the soil, see if it's wet. Like right now, I watered, um, I don't know, five days ago, and it is still moist today. Part of that is because it's not in the sun outside. It's not in the, you know, hot temperatures. We put it, we put a lot of our plants downstairs in our gym, actually, and then we put several um, by a window in our laundry room over the winter. And if you ever get little buds, I don't see any on there right now, but little flowering buds, let's say in the spring that are on here, if you want your plant to stay dormant, you're gonna wanna take those little buds off for a period of time. So let's get started with just taking the peppers off. So let's take off the jalapenos first. So a, a jalapeno that is red like this um, is completely past its ripening phase. Whereas when it comes when it first starts on the plant, it's green like this. Now, these plants, we had a very late summer. So these plants didn't get the amount of heat that they needed. You know, peppers really, really love sun. And we had a really rainy, um, we had a really rainy spring. And so we ended up <clears throat> not getting enough heat for this plant to really take off. And by the time it did, where we got all of these, um, it was time for it to come inside. So we didn't save any other pepper plants to overwinter. And that is the, all the jalapenos. Now they look similar to this at a distance, but I'm gonna show you this up close. Um, in fact, let's do that now. Okay, so as you can see, 
These are jalapenos at different growth cycles. Obviously the green one is brand, brand new. The red ones are completely ripe. So if you've never seen a red jalapeno, it's really this at this stage where it's completely overripe. Now this is theory even becoming a little shriveled because um, it took me a long time to get around to making this video. So they've been on the plant a lot longer than they needed to be. Now these are the Carolina Reapers. So you can kind of see they have a really different texture. The jalapeno in comparison, let me show you, is very smooth and the, the skin is much thicker. And the Carolina Reaper is kind of like what I would imagine I don't know if it's because they're so hot. I mean, they almost look like ghost peppers in a way sometimes. Now this one is in the middle of ripening. So see how it's, here, let's get below this leaf. Um, see how it's green and then turning yellowy orange? Well, it will turn red next. So let's get those off. This one, this one is green little little green guy a lot of these actually didn't um start sprouting like i said till the end because you know peppers they want a ton of heat to grow so the hotter it is the better of course if it's hotter you're going to also hydrate them a lot more often but um i mean our beds were watered every day and um, you might in the beginning of the year only do two or three days a week. So what we wanna do is create a joint system for this plant. So we're gonna take some of these back to a much more manageable size for keeping in the laundry room. So we're gonna have two joints here. See, this whole thing will grow anew in the spring, but we want to be able to have these um, offshoots so that it can regrow itself in the spring. I'm actually going to bring that one down to here. Okay. And then I'm going to take the leaves off. We don't want the plant to try to nurture itself in growing things. So what we're going to do, what I've seen others do, is just take all the leaves off. So let me use this small one. Now this is all See it. This is all the Carolina Reaper. One, maybe, I think this one is jalapeno. I think it took a jalapeno off of this one. So what we want to do for this is we want to leave a lot of this actually so that it has a chance. So it's got the main limb and then two limbs here. Now let's turn this around. Take off all these extra little baby leaves. Again, this is just to let it go into dormancy. The root system is still alive. The trunk of the plant will still have a lot of life left in it, a lot of growth in the spring that it doesn't have to do again. Um, it doesn't have to regrow these networks here. It's gonna have some of them already in place. Actually, I'm gonna take off this one too. And that one. All these little joints we don't need. And it seems like you're butchering the plant. It really, it really does. But I promise you, this plant will have full growth, full maturity, much faster than any more um, peppers that we grow from seed which we do a lot of growth from seed, and then also really more than you can get at your nursery. This limb, isn't it so interesting? This limb is, is the same. These two were all that was left when we had started the splicing. And this joint here, we're almost like the cornerstone of the plant is now. Um, this has grown significantly in diameter versus this one. No nutrients, no energy was spent on this part of the plant. So all of this was sent to the Carolina Reaper. Now the, the jalapeno still came out of this one and this one. And so we still got, I would say we got twice as much Carolina Reaper 
pods as we did jalapeno. So if you're looking to do this over winter your plants, it's a great idea. It gives you a head start next year. This plant, some people overwinter their peppers for two or three years successfully. Um, we did this one particularly because obviously Joe spent some time on grafting it and the graft was successful and we saw growth and it was just really cool. Um, we didn't overwinter anything else. So this one will be our first one and we'll see how it goes. Now, the other things you can do. Oh, here we go. Um, this unsuccessful splice was a ghost pepper. So Carolina Reaper, ghost pepper, jalapeno. Um, other things you can do. When you pull this out of the garden and the root ball is exposed, we didn't do this, but in watching some others over winter, what we'll do is next year, we will take the root system out of the garden bed, rinse off all of the dirt, leaving the root system completely bare so that it doesn't bring in any of the bacteria, pests, or anything from the garden that might have had <clears throat> some kind of negative impact to the pepper plant and you basically start anew. Yes. And we came in with a ball of dirt around our root system and planted it in new soil. We don't want pests to come in the house from the soil. So we thought we did our best with that, but what we'll do differently next year is like I said, we'll take the root system up out of the ground, rinse it off, and then we will plant those raw roots into some new dirt um, so that they have to um, start anew, kind of go go dormant, start in new soil, and have a fresh start in the spring. So this is the rest of the plant that's left behind. It's gonna look like this. This is perfect. This will sit in our um, laundry room where it's warm, right by a window that'll give it sun. We will water it once a week. And these were all of the extra uh, limbs and leaves that we did not need. Here's the peppers that we are gonna dry. I will actually either do a video or um, take some pictures for you of what that looks like. We're gonna put these in glass jars and then when we decide what we wanna do with the jalapenos and definitely it's gonna be a harder decision on what to do with these Carolina Reapers um, because these are extremely hot. So in contrast, a Carolina Reaper is much further on the heat scale than a jalapeno. So having opportunities to do anything with these um, are limited. You could make a pepper jelly you could, you know, use it in your pickling. Let's say, you know, you could use a smaller one in some pickling if you want some heat. But these are going to have a significant amount of heat Put it on a rubber tray, just because I don't want any scorching from the metal. And so you could do that as well. Um, next, what we're going to do is we're going to go outside. We had a really bad windstorm. We get lots of wind around here, which kind of makes plants grow kind of at an angle if you don't have any kind of um, system in place to hold things up like a staking system, um, then things kind of get blown over. So I, I have my hat on, I'm gonna go outside, I'm gonna help the boys clean up the shingles that came off the roof, and we're gonna deadhead all of the flowers, the sunflowers, the echinacea, the, um, rose, the rosemary doesn't have any flowers, but the lavender and um, overwintering of a pepper. Next, we are gonna do yard cleanup. Then I have about a thousand bulbs to plant. So we'll catch you in the next video. Thank you for watching. It's Christina within the garden.